Things looking difficult for the Perrottet government tonight could be crucial for him if he's going to shift some momentum back in the final days of this campaign. With me is a former Liberal frontbencher, hopes to be another a frontbencher again after the election, is Stuart Ayres. Stuart Ayres, great to see you here in your hometown of Penrith. It's good to have you in Penrith too, Kieran. What do you expect to hear from the undecided voters this evening? What, what sort of issues will they raise with the oh, leaders? I think you'll hear people from Penrith talking about cost of living. There's definitely a lot of pressure on household budgets at the moment after a series of sustained interest rate rises since the change in the federal government. So I know that's putting a lot of pressure. Also, people who have investment properties, that puts pressure on what they can charge for rent. So renters are really feeling that as well. I think there'll be questions about infrastructure. When you live in outer Western Sydney, you've got to travel a lot for your job. So we've been trying to bring jobs closer to people in Penrith, mm. but being able to access infrastructure like railways, roads, they become really important for how people move around their communities. One, one of the things that Labor's been making a big deal of, I expect Mr Minns to focus on that tonight as well, is that cap on tolls. Must have been tempting for the Liberals to say, OK, we'll neutralise that, we'll put a cap in too. Well, because that's a big issue for people commuting in and out of the city from here. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. But people who are travelling on the M4 are travelling at much faster travel times. They've seen the benefit of the M4 tunnel, which has really improved the way the entire road flows. So I think they are getting some value. And on top of that, we've had a rebate scheme in place for a long time and there's very little difference between what Labor is offering and what that rebate is offering. If you're a regular driver yeah. and, and, say, every day of the week doing a distance from Penrith to yeah. the city, There's, so I think it's, it's marginal, is it? Yeah, I think the Parliamentary Budget Office has factored it in at about 2%. So there's very, very little difference in the two policy positions being offered by the, go the government and opposition. One of the things that surprised me during the campaign and, and the last little while has been that this government has, has done a huge amount in terms of that infrastructure you talk about. The city looks very different these days to what it did only a decade or so ago. Why would Dominic Perrottet now take such a big shift and rule out privatisations, well, given I, it was central to the... Yeah. the well, progress? I think we've got, uh, we've got a manageable debt position now. I think we can keep rolling off the back of the infrastructure that we finish and roll into new infrastructure as well. We've got the capacity to keep doing that. I don't think we need to undertake any additional privatisations to keep funding the infrastructure that we've got in place. The Warragamba Dam wall is a, another issue relevant to yep. voters in this area. You're going to raise the, the, the height of the dam wall, but yep. there's no funding for it in the, in the budget forward estimates. Does that, does that reveal a, quite a significant black hole in the budget? No, I don't think it does. I think that it's really important here that we see the federal government approve this project. Why would we rob the budget of infrastructure funding until we know whether the federal government is actually going to improve this project? They, for all intents and purposes, have a capacity to veto that. We've undertaken one of the most extensive environmental impact statements ever undertaken, not just in New South Wales, but across the country. This is a really critical piece of infrastructure, and I think once the federal government approves it, we can start to talk about finance. And then you talk dollars at that point yeah. now. Andrew Clannell, my colleague, has been reporting these numbers today and yesterday. Matt Keane looks like a real turn-off for a lot of conservative and traditional Liberal voters. Mm. Are you surprised by some of the numbers you've seen there? Net negative minus uh, uh, 29 in Goulburn, similar in Leppington, even in Wakehurst, a, mm. a seat where the, you try and combat the teals. Matt Keane, minus 4%. Well, I don't think this election is about politicians. I think it's actually about the voters and the citizens of New South Wales. So I don't think we should be really that focused on the personalities of people across the political divide. We're a government that are focused on reducing the cost of living. We've got rebates and vouchers to be able to have a short-term impact. Our long-term economic plan is about making sure we've got a really strong economy because the best way to ride out difficult economic conditions is having a job. And in Western Sydney, we know what happens when you don't manage the economy well. It's middle, in, it's middle incomes, it's middle Australia that really feel the pressure. You get One Nation's vote up in the double digits, 15 16% in Hornsby yeah. and, and Leppington again. One Nation looks like it's benefiting from a splintering in the Liberal vote. Well, I think there's a danger here that One Nation voters accidentally elect a Greens Labor minority government. Uh, so if you are thinking about voting One Nation and perhaps you're um, somewhat not, not entirely happy with the government and you're a traditional Liberal voter and you're thinking One Nation, I'd strongly be encouraging people to put a two on their How to Vote card for their local Liberal. The last thing that a One Nation voter I would think wants to do is elect a Greens Labor minority government.